How's it going, everyone? Brian from Apex Detail. This is mail call number five, I believe. This is where I can answer your questions face to face. And some of the questions you ask, I can get a little bit more across to you if I do it through this format. I do pull questions from emails, messages, um, questions in the comment sections under videos, and also other formats. So I do leave my email um, down below in the description box and my contact information is easy to get. So let's get started. The first question will come from James. I see you using paint depth gauges in some of your videos. Which one do you recommend I buy and how is it used? That's a great question and you do not have to go out and purchase the most expensive unit for thousands and thousands of dollars that measures every single layer on every single substrate out there. You can get something like the little CM8801EN here. This little guy here is just a little over a hundred bucks, comes in a carrying case with uh, calibration tools that come with it, easy to use, just need to calibrate every third or fourth time you use it and it's self-explanatory. There's directions here that, that show you how to use it and how to calibrate it and I'm going to take a few minutes here and just show you how I get a cheaper unit like this to work for me and it's paid for itself many many times over using it this way. I'm going to be starting correction on this uh, new Toyota here. It's going to be protected. It doesn't have any miles on it, but it has a lot of wear and tear from a car wash down the side here. And the first thing I do is I use this to get measurements. This will tell me if there's been work done, if it's been repainted, if somebody has already shaved it for some reason, meaning has done correction. All right, so this is a Toyota, this is Asian, and you're gonna have a little bit less finish on a vehicle like this than say maybe a Ford, uh, Chevy, GMC, Corvette, some of the German cars. It's just the way it is. They just cut back on material. Normally, I can get a reading. With this, you're gonna get a reading of every la layer on the substrate, and it has to be metal. And I'm gonna get an average of about 5.1, 5.2 on GM, Ford, Chrysler, um, and some German cars on an Asian car we're gonna look for an average of about 4.7 mils thickness that's all the layers so the first thing I'll do when I get that car in is I'm gonna go around to every panel and do maybe one or two readings for every panel to make sure everything is um, pretty much nice and fluid all the way around the car and make sure there's no work that's been done to it let's take a look here that's 5.1, that's a little thicker than usual. Let's come down here to 5.0. Two readings per panel, 5.0. That's very good, that means you have plenty of clear. Gives you an indication, 4.7. Now that's normal, that's more normal. Reading for an Asian vehicle like this, 4.7. 5.0. That's very good. Okay, 15.3. Now that's telling me a story that there's been work done on this quarter panel. So let's take a couple more readings. 12.9, that's off the charts when it comes to 14.1. 8.5 is still too high. How about down here? 7.6, back here? All right. Now we're down, we're back to normal. That's a little bit lower than I expected. So we're looking for signs of work being done to it. And I'm gonna show you one right here. Overspray. And they didn't bother taping up this PPF here. You can see the clear is going right up over top of it. So this quarter ha panel has been painted and this lets me know. Let's keep going around the truck and make sure the rest of the truck has not been scathed in any way 4.5 now that's that's normal 4.6 5 4.7 so that's all normal all right, so we're good to go for the whole vehicle. We just have to watch what we're doing back at that rear quarter panel because we don't know who repaired it, how much clear coat they gave us. Another thing that I will do, this is the type of um, a brand new truck and we already have these type of marks all over the place. So that's what we're working on with this truck. So we will be doing a little bit of shaving, a little bit of correction, a little bit of compounding. So when we start, we're gonna take a reading. 
5.0, 5 mils. I'm going to start the compound here. And in between every pass or two, or after the cutting stage is done, I'm going to take another measurement and make sure that it is uh, a measurement that hasn't take more, taken more than one or two tenths of uh, a mil of clear coat. We don't want to shave it too far. This thing is just starting out its life, guys. I think it has under 2,000 miles on it. So, you know, it's going to be out on the road, parked in the driveway, out under the sun for years and years to come. We want to leave as much clear coat as possible. This thing here assists me in doing so. I hope that helps answer your question. Okay, the next question goes to Tommy Yan, and he wants to know my favorite compounds and my favorite one steps, and I'll give you three from each. Cutting compounds, my three, my top three favorite in this order, the 3D ACA 500, the 3D AAT 501, and Sonax Cut Max. And there are a few under that that I'll reach for depending on how hard or how soft the clear coat is. When it comes to one steps, these three by far stand out um, pretty much in front of the rest. These are just one steps, not all in ones, one step uh, compounds and polishes. Uh, 3D1 is number one. The TAC um, Refinish Ultra is number two. And Sonax Cut and Finish is my third choice. Next question. The next one here I pulled from an email. This is more of a tip than it is a question at all, really. And I really wanted to share it with all of you out there because I started to implement this one myself. Something most of us don't realize in water produced from dehumidifiers, and I have three of them throughout um, you know, the basement, the garages. They are essentially equal to distilled water. Many of us have them in our basements to help control moisture, discard the water down the drain. Uh, I save mine and put them in old one gallon milk jugs and have essentially free, constant uh, source of mineral free water whenever needed for any detailing process. And since I do a lot of um, rinseless washes, I started to do this and I have quite a few gallons now because I really do get a lot of moisture pulled out of my basement and some of my garages from that dehumidifier and he's absolutely right. They are essentially distilled. So uh, there's a great tip for you. Okay, Fred Gammon wants to know how to clean and maintain leather seats that are in relatively good shape and that's a great question. All right, let's start at the beginning. If I'm Cleaning a leather seat for the first time and it needs a little bit of help, I'm going to use Angel Wax Heaven for Leather or even Lithium Hyper Cleanse here. At, uh, these are ready to use, for, so of course it'll be full strength with the dedicated leather uh, tools that I have in my videos. For just maintenance, after it's been cleaned then and protected, and just want to do a quick uh, light cleaning, it's going to be one quick spray of this into a damp microfiber. Warm water, run your microfiber under warm water under a tap, wring it out really good so it's not dripping wet, just damp. And then a quick spray into that, and that's what I'm going to use for half the seat, maybe even the whole seat if it's just lightly dusted, and that's how I maintain my seats. Okay, next I'm going to address training, and I've been asked questions through multiple sources about that. Um, when it comes to training, before I moved into the new shop here, I did a few training sessions. Um, having moved into the new shop here, it's been a year now, and I still do not have it even close to being set up. Um, as to the way I want it really and the way I need it. It's been so busy here We're booked up into uh, the third week of December here now as of what the second week of September third week of September um, So it's hard to keep up and then yet finish the shop on top of that and get some good videos out for you guys as well so I'm working on it, and when the shop is, is finally finished, I will resume training, training again, and I do have 2020 in mind. Uh, I'm not sure when, though, so stay tuned to social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and even the videos. I'll, I'll mention something somewhere if I'm doing training again. And, um, yeah, it'll. it's usually a, a two-day training uh, session, Saturday, Sunday, around 10 a.m. To, to 4 p.m. And uh, we try to cover everything. The first day, we're going to start, um, you know, at the basics. And by the second day, at the end of the day, you're, you're working with ceramic coatings. You're doing uh, wet sanding. You're working with all different types of polishers. 
Uh, we have companies um, from uh, that sell polishers and we'll provide them during the training session so you can try them out get some hands-on with them uh, and also chemical companies also uh, there as well so it's really fun and it's 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 a lot to soak in so when I do start them again I'll let you know the next question is from Jeff and he wants to know how to fix failing and flaking clear coat there's only one, I'm going to keep this one short because there's really only one way to do it properly and that's to sand that layer of failing clear completely off and start from scratch. Even if there's one area on a panel that you can blend in nicely and it's not easy, it's going to continue to fail. So you're going to have failing areas all over the place uh, and the best way to do it, if you want to get rid of it completely, Go ahead and sand that panel, send it to a body shop, have it repainted. It's going to save you a lot of headache because you may get an area looking good and a month or two or maybe three down the road, you're going to start, start to see it fail all over again. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's mail call Q&A. Uh, keep those questions coming. You know, I may not have the biggest detailing channel out there, but the subscriber base that I have, intelligent, inquisitive, they want to learn, and I wouldn't trade you guys for any number of subscribers. Uh, the email will be down in the description box, or there's many other ways to get in contact with me. My contact information is easy to find. Brian from Apex Detail, I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you find the channel helpful and are enjoying the videos, like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. That will notify you when we have fresh content from the channel for you guys for your viewing pleasure.